Hey, it's it's Matt. Um, I've got a, another transparent watercolor. This is a 7 by 10 inch painting of a king vulture. King vultures are from Central and South America and they're wanted to paint one of these a long time for a long time because of their fantastic saturated colors and interesting shapes. Um, so I, you can see my photo reference on the left side of the page and I got that at the, the local zoo and it has kind of a dark background. In my painting, I wanted to push it in a different direction. I wanted to have the entire page pretty much white and have the bird kind of emerge out of the white of the page. I don't usually use white backgrounds. I kind of feel like that's not always an actual choice. It's just kind of a default for, for people to use. In this case, I really wanted to use a white background. I wanted to have those those uh, black colors of the bird's head and the grays of its neck against that white and the saturated, saturated colors of the bird against the white to really play up the, the colors that I had. So I started by covering the entire page with the light, lightest local colors. And you can see I was working fairly um, uh, transparent paint pigments and uh, is doing most of the initial washes with uh, a sharp number four brush round. Um, right now I'm using a number two. And there's my head poking in the way. So I was going over this and kind of glazing in layers of detail. Um, and by glazing I'm using transparent, fairly transparent colors but going over in many layers and building up those those colors slowly and as they overlap you tend to build a, a nice textured look to it. So I know that with some of these areas I can go dark pretty quickly because say the bottom of the beak that's going to be pretty dark I can push that with some of the, the darker tones pretty pretty quickly and other areas like the the kind of uh, creamy colored feathers I'm going to need to leave those light and can't go dark, dark too quickly. Um, with the grays and blacks of the face, I can put those colors in pretty dark pretty quickly and start balancing the rest of the painting off of those. It looks like I'm using black here. In reality, I, all, I pretty much don't use black. I mix um, blacks and grays. Uh, and I primarily do that using alizarin crimson and phthalo green. And mixing those two together gives me a very dark blackish color, but it always has a little bit more personality than using, say, a tube black like lamp black. It's always going to lean a little bit towards the green or a little bit towards the red. And then even if I've mixed it fairly neutrally, I can then bring in a little bit of, say, phthalo blue to make it more on the blue side, or I can put in a little green or a little bit of uh, purple. And so those dark grays and blacks will always have a little bit of personality, and I can push those in a slight direction to have it balance with other tones that I'm using on the page. Here I'm working on the waddle of the bird. Well, it, the waddle's pretty, I don't know whether it's officially gross or just strange looking, but um, I do primarily medical illustrations, so that kind of reminded me of painting intestines or a tumor or something other repulsive thing like that. But uh, apparently, for the king vultures, that's uh, it's very attractive. Uh, but it is colorful, so I give it that. It, it's it's interesting. It was kind of fun to paint. It had some interesting textures, and that was kind of what appealed to me about this bird. You have these. Kind of warty textures, you've got lumpy textures, you've got ridges, you've got you know little feathers and uh, shiny beaks and glassy eyes. So you, you kind of had a little of everything in this. It was a great painting challenge to kind of have all that come together and look realistic with all the different textures that you had to render on this. For the top of the head and the neck, um, you kind of have to, because I'm going to have dark feathering over that, I have to establish all the the basic tones of those shapes, like the, the bald head. Um, if I were to start bringing the black feathers in now, I couldn't change the colors. If I tried to wash in some of those other colors, those dark colors would, would bleed all over the place. So I've got to 
build the bald head and the bald neck first so I can bring the blacks in later. Um, and with the vultures and uh, condors, you tend to have a lot of the uh, bald parts to the head because of what they're eating. If you're eating a carcass, you're going to get slop on your head, so they don't have a lot of feathers on there. It helps them keep clean, which I guess is a concern for some of the vultures. So many layers make all these details look right. And I, you can see that I'm starting to work a little more opaquely here, but I'm still basically glazing. Um, the only part I'm really dry brushing are the, the little hairs that are going in on the neck now and moving in over the, the scalp uh, to render the bald head. So those are dry brush. And there are tons of little hairs on there. Here I was trying to bring in a little bit more uh, detail to the feathering and into that little uh, wordy part on the side of his face. And you can see more detail went in on that. Um, parts of its flesh, like in this area, was kind of like a, uh, almost like an orange peel that a little stretched out. So I was rendering the bumps in on that to have it read correctly as having that wordy sort of texture. The rough around the neck, I was trying to get everything kind of working from the dark grays and have some good shadows working towards the lighter colors of the breast. And again, I, I'll work a little here, a little there, trying to keep everything developing evenly. So there's, you know, I want it to fade to the edges, but I want the main part of my uh, painting to have a fairly even amount of detail. Bringing in some purples to those little shadow areas as it rolls off to the edge of the paper. Try to keep some color in those, not just use the grays, maybe use a little blue or a little purple or a little uh, orangey kind of colors, keeps it more interesting. It also pulls in the oranges and purples on the face. So there it was, all done. Um, so there it is, the King Vulture, 7 by 10 inches. I appreciate you looking. Um, have a peek at the blog or the website for more information, and leave a comment if you have any questions.